this time, I'll hand the floor over to Seth Southern, our second vice president, to introduce our guest speaker today. Really, our guest speaker today uh, certainly doesn't need an introduction, but I do have a few things that I'd like to share before we actually bring him up here uh, this afternoon. Of course, as you already know, our guest speaker today is none other, none other than our county judge executive, Mr. David Johnston. David was born on April 20th, 1951 in Louisville, Kentucky. He married Barbara Jones in 1971. <coughs> David graduated or attended Horse Branch Elementary, and then graduated from Ohio County High School in 1969. He has an associate's degree in executive management, Zimmerman's Time, Time Study Institute. He's certified as a CMFGE manufacturing engineer. He was active in the U.S. Army from 1971 through 1973. A little bit about his work experience. He worked as an engineer in various manufacturing plants, including Cowden Manufacturing and Thomas Industries in Ohio County, and Elk Brand Manufacturing in Hop Hopkinsville in Cadiz, Kentucky. <coughs> he also worked a little bit as a real estate salesman and an auctioneer. I did not know that until just a few months ago. He was our first <coughs> park director for Ohio County. He was hired in 1982 for a three-year contract, if you will, but 26 years and one month later, he finally left that position. He has worked for or with every judge executive since the conception of the office. He has worked with state and federal officials for many of those years to help bring things to Ohio County here at the park and also other places throughout the county. As you're well aware, he was elected as our judge executive in 2010. And as you most recently are aware, aware he was re-elected to continue to serve for another term as our county judge executive. It's a great honor this afternoon to present to you and introduce our guest speaker, Mr. David Johnson. Thank you, Seth. It's quite a quite an honor. Um, it, it is an honor. Uh, I thank you for your honor, the, the honor of your confidence to give me a second term as your judge executive was the first thing I want to say. Sorry I stumbled over it, but uh, I do appreciate this opportunity. In one word, the state of our county is great. Uh, I'm not going to give you as many what we've done in the last year of things as I usually do because that takes up a, a lot of the time. I'm sure it gets boring after the fifth or sixth item. Uh, but we did get a record amount of roads paved. Um, and, and we're really close to having water lines to every house to serve every home in Ohio County. And it's the same way with the first step in providing fire service, to, fire protection to every house. We have uh, uh, goals set and steps, stepping stones to get to serving everybody with a fire hydrant. And the first goal was anywhere that we could get to uh, 10 houses within a thousand feet and there's a six inch water line. We met that goal and we changed it now. We're working for anybody that we could get five houses in a thousand feet on a six inch water line. And we're pretty much at that goal. So we keep going down, and it'll be soon. We'll be to the point that we'll have to be looking at upsizing the water lines to uh, provide fire service. But that's a good thing. Um, and we've also, I think, come a long way in quality of life uh, issues, uh, services like the parks, and uh, like this senior center, and the golf course. And of course, so the, our effort with Trail Town to uh, put trails through our county, both water trails and land trails, I think that goes a long way. We are basically, the reason we're doing great, as I uh, said in my open statement, is because coal. We do have a coal economy here. However, we don't plan on counting on it and staying there. As you know, Osita is off and running. Uh, 
It took us several months to get it done, but we got Chase in as our director, uh, and uh, we're, we're, we're going places with that. The uh, OCDA has a big, broad uh, list of things that they've got to accomplish. It's not, an, it's not one of those uh, uh, recruitment tools. It's a lot more than that. A workforce development is probably the number one and main focus of our count that our county is on right now for, for uh, economic development it's workforce development is our number one thing in that so uh, that's what we're trying to do now and another thing to prepare for economy that's not based on coal uh, we've started a savings account um, and, and that, uh, that savings account is being used now uh, in economic development to help any business that's adding on to their business or that they're building something new. We have a loan program, and that's how we're using our uh, savings account. So it'll, have, it'll be a double, uh, it'll have a double duty, this savings account will. One, to be there when cold severance money's not uh, our main uh, income anymore. And then also uh, to use this economic development while we go. Um, when I said the economy is great in the county, let me give you a couple of things I base that on. Our coast service money has not de decreased when most areas all around us have decreased. Well, all over the state they have, but ours is not. Um, and then our uh, occupational tax is up. And it's not all about taxes, but that's a good measure of what your total economy is because we're getting 1% of all the income that's made, the net profits and of the wages uh, in Ohio County, the salaries and all that we're getting, 1%. And with that number going up constantly, I would think that's a good leading indicator that our economy is going up, that, that we're doing well, doing great. Uh, we'll hit you on a couple short-term goals here, and then we'll talk about the broad term, long term. Our short-term goals, like this year, is to, uh, well, within this term anyway, to pay most of the roads to homes in Ohio County. And the goal would be to anywhere there's three houses on a mile of uh, road, that we would have that paid to, their, to those houses. Uh, and that is that is a very high percentage of the people in the county will be served if we reach that goal. And we're at like 97 percent of the people in the county have water lines to their house. We want to finish up to 100 uh, percent, at least available. You know, there'll always be some folks that don't want it, and won't sign, won't sign on to it, or hook up. But we want it available to 100 percent of our residents. Uh, we've got some challenges facing us in the county that we've got to address. We've got to quit ignoring them and get on them. One of them, I talk about occupational tax and how valuable it is to us. Uh, we load out seven shopping carts, loads of mail, going out to uh, mail out to people to fill out their occupational tax and net profits. Six of those shopping carts come back with a zero on them. And, and a lot of folks call it, why in the world did I get this in the mail? Well, the ordinance says that's where we send them. So we're going to appoint a committee, and we're going to start trying to figure out some way of reducing the amount of mail and the amount of people we contact, other ways to find who owes us taxes rather than this broad mailing. So that's one of our big, uh, big challenges. And in the process of doing, hitting it with such a broad shot, we're missing people because every so often we find someone that's not been paying and we locate them. So in the process of trying to uh, uh, mail out fewer of these uh, forms, we also want to hit the people we're missing some way. Um, as you know, when you've been hearing in the news, even though our economy's great, because of... Uh, it, other issues, we have a lot of folks that are homeless in our county, more than most of us would know. If I hadn't worked at the park and hadn't been in the office I'm in now, I would not see the homeless people. 
I wouldn't have known we had the problem, but we do. It usually has uh, lots of reasons for it. Uh, usually it's some kind of chemical dependence, either drugs or alcohol or, or mental illness. Uh, usually that's the component involved in it. If, if it's not, it's a short-term problem, it's easy to fix, but those are the two, the main reasons you find people homeless. Some domestic violence, but there is a uh, group that takes care of that, so we don't end up with people homeless because of domestic violence. It's usually the other reasons. Uh, our county, being mostly rural, will not accept or won't a countywide planning and zoning. I think I could get run out of town quickly if I come up and propose that. But there are uh, some of our citizens can't enjoy their property because of what neighbors do. So something short of countywide planning and zoning, we've got to put our heads together. Some of you may end up on the committee to see how to do this and to come up with a nuisance ordinance and a siding ordinance, maybe built together. The siding means we can actually go out and uh, our emergency management litter basement officer can actually go out and write tickets and people have to go to court because of them, them having a uh, house that's blowing down on the other people's property. Their trash is getting, it's, it's so unsightly and, and uh, uh, disturbing their neighbors. Uh, our garbage so much, or sewage on their property that's keeping, that the people next door can't go out. The, so we've got to address that since we, we can't get a county wide zoning uh, ordinance in. We're going to have to come up with something to solve this nuisance problem for our citizens. So uh, that's got to be a task, and we're going to tackle that this year. We're not going to wait very long on that. Um, and the discussion's coming back up. That may be as far as we can get it. We're going to bring the discussion back up and reintroduce our no smoking ordinance. That will be done this year. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if for sure that we can get it passed. Uh, I'm going to get the committee back on that this next court meeting to look it back over and see if it's still what we want. Uh, and then also pass it around to see if there's one issue in, in it that would keep some of our matches for being for it. Um, I'll just tell you right off the bat I'm for it because uh, if uh, Abraham Lincoln said that uh, your rights ended uh, tip of my nose, well, smoke in my nose is definitely invading my, my uh, space, right? So I, I'll say that I am, and uh, I believe there's at least one other magistrate to this, and we'll just have to fill everybody else out on it. But, but I'm ready to roll on that. Uh, the, uh, but the biggest, number one thing that we've got that's economically going to impact our county government in the next few years, we've got to address the situation with our jail. We've got to build one or we've got to decide we won't have one and deal with other counties and in either way, whether it's the new jail or deal, dealing with not having a jail, we're talking about some serious money to be uh, raised to do either one. So we, even though we totally fund our jail that's there now, it's still much less than it would take to uh, transport and house in other counties. Uh, you, you might just put your pencil to it and Mike could come up with a figure make it not look so bad, but we lived through it once in the nine, early 90s and it was not a good situation at all. Uh, it took more people to transport than it did to run the jail. And uh, even though the, we're not like in imminent danger of our jail being closed. We are one of only two life safety jails in the state of Kentucky. Of the class jail we are, there's just two of us. And ours is like three times as large as the other one that exists. So we're really, we're really a uh, bullseye for those folks. If, if, if there ever was any more regulation whatsoever at the state, it would be very easy for them out of all the kind of jails we have even though ours has run well and serves well. Uh, 
full service jail, if we were able to get it, we can recruit a lot of our costs from uh, keeping state inmates. Right now, if somebody goes to trial, a lot of times they're there three years. Two to three years. Three years, not uncommon at all for go three. Ohio County is paid 100% of taking care of that inmate all that time until they go to trial. Once their final sentencing comes through, the state starts paying for it. But guess what? We don't get them then. They're gone that day to another jail because we're life safety, not full service. We're okay for the first three years, but not for that last six months before they go to the penitentiary. <coughs> so we're getting out of that. So if we get a new jail, it would offset the operational cost somewhat. If we got it. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm talking so long on this because it is the biggest thing financially that we've got to talk about. Um, I think the climate's good for Ohio County now, both at state and and national level. So we will, once we get our plan together on what kind of jail we've got to have, I assure you, we'll be all over our officials. Uh, Ed West will be on uh, after him. <laughs> and. Uh, and, and, uh, <laughs> and you're not to put in to get the money to get with and, uh, and we'll be over off after everybody we can to get help the, the bottom line is we have to do it and uh, if we have to uh, go in debt for a jail that's what we'll have to do because right now our indebtedness is good we're paying down uh, pay down uh, over a million dollars in the first term we, we owe that much less than we did four years ago so we're, we do take that seriously and don't like debt. But with that said, if that's what it takes, that's what we'll have to do, and hopefully we don't. But that's our biggest challenge. We can offer so many services for the county now because of our uh, economic uh, situation. But uh, that would sure hit a big chunk out of it if we had to pay for our own jail. And uh, I'll close by saying, again, the state of Ohio County is great. Uh, I think I've got a couple minutes. I was sure I'd uh, like to hear a question or two. On the jail, Judge, uh, yes, sir. is there a minimum uh, size and uh, investment that you can make to take you out of the present classification into a classification that expands? Yes, uh, it, it, will, it has to be. Uh, this is the only number I have. It has to accommodate 150 inmates. And uh, that's went up in recent years. Whenever I came into office, I was told it was 100. And then very shortly thereafter, it was 150. So that's a recent requirement change. I think they're really discouraging people from building them, actually. Uh, so uh, money-wise, that's somewhere in the 12 to $13 million dollars. Basically, where that's at. How many? What's the number of inmates on an average that's there now? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Is that capacity? Uh, actually, five. A capacity fifty. But. I'll see monitor don't print that. So, <laughs> uh, but, uh, I, but but we average sixty-five. That's a pretty big, pretty good thing. Yes, ma'am. What kind of an employee base would that be uh, a new facility? Employee? About the same we have now. Really? Okay. Yeah, about the same to operate the new jails that would what we have now. Uh, yes, ma'am. I applaud your stance on um, secondhand smoke with a public health issue, and I appreciate that. I'm very glad to see it coming up before our fiscal report again. Um, a second matter, just curiosity, on our homeless um, right in Ohio County, how are we gathering those numbers? Well, two ways. Okay. One, as our volunteer firemen in several of the fire departments actually set the mission to go look for them. Uh, I don't think they found them all. And uh, another way is we know because uh, there are folks that have funds that try to pay for temporary housing for people. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, the ones that wander in out here to see Susan at the park are me at my office. Okay. 
that, so that's that's the two two ways that uh, that, that we try to count it. And you can't total it. You can't total it. Do you have any kind of percentage that you can think of? Twenty-four thousand population. Oh, okay. Let me I'm, let me tell you that tonight there'll mm -hmm. be forty people that's either begging a place in a outbuilding somewhere oh. or a car or under bridge or somewhere that doesn't have an adequate place to sleep tonight. Very enlightening. So we're not we're not talking about those that have been displaced from their home that may be staying with a family member and they're still considered they to be homeless count. because there's you know there's mm -hmm. been some controversy about how yeah. that yeah. we're well, talking about well, truly do not have a roof over our head situation. Or that they may stay with different relatives a case from night to night, yeah. Occasionally. But then no, in the no case they have not. Right. So uh, it's it's sad, but uh, uh, we have. <coughs> I'll tell you a few places where some stay. I don't want to violate people's uh, privacy and tell you who they are. There's at least three. Uh, one man and a couple in Hartford, downtown Hartford, that's there all the time. And and then there's. Uh, there's at least uh, one single person and a family in Beaver Dam, and then 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 it goes rural after that. So there's there's a lot of need. Then we have transit too. We have people sure. that's not our people. They just show up here, and they they uh, don't really have any place else to go. And unfortunately, we usually talk to them and try to get them to come up with a place to go, and we try to get them there. So, but but there is a need for this. Yes, sir. Any question on the homeless shelter? Yes, sir. I guess I'm interested in your opinion on what some of the biggest roadblocks mm -hmm. that are out there that exist to having a homeless shelter here again. Well, um, I'll give you the long term one and the short term. The, the long term is we've got to find the money to build what we've got. And we are getting some of it. It's coming in. Look. The short term is that most everybody wants us to have a homeless shelter, but not next to them. <laughs> so all the temporary what places we've come up with, we have an outcry from the community that is pretty much blocked. <clears throat> so that's the short term problem. The long term problem is raising the money to build the facility. Anybody else? Yeah. I sure appreciate it. I hope I didn't bore you. Thank you, Judge, for taking the time to give us that update.